Good afternoon. I just want to take a moment. This is truly an amazing day. The weather, the view, and all of you being here. To Chief Judge Barbera, to Judge Hotton, Court of Appeals, Chief Judge Morrissey, my colleagues of the Circuit Court for Prince George's County, the judges of the District Court, our County Executive Baker, Council Chair Davis, members of the County Council, State's Attorney Alsobrook, Sheriff High, Clerk of the Court Harrison, Reverend Macklin, elected officials, partners in this Justice Center, guests, and citizens of Prince George's County. Welcome, welcome to the grand opening of the Family Justice Center for Prince George's County. On behalf of the judges of the Circuit Court for Prince George's County, I welcome you to this historic and long-awaited event in the history of Prince George's County. The culmination of six years of working, planning, and collaborating. The grand opening of this amazing facility that will serve the citizens of Prince George's County. Citizens that have been the victims of domestic violence, sexual abuse, elder abuse, and human trafficking. All will be served in this facility, our own Family Justice Center here in Prince George's County. They will get the services they need in one location. And it is fitting that this location, which Judge Krause reminded me, and I'm gonna tell you the history. This location, when I first came to Upper Marlboro hmm, in 1984 to work in the state's attorney's office, this was the district court building. This is where we tried our cases, on the ground floor of this building. So I'm very excited that we have now come full circle in our Family Justice Center is again located right across from the courthouse. The citizens can simply walk from that building across the parking lot to this building to get their services. So we are so grateful that so many of you are here today. And before we go any further, I'm gonna take a few minutes to introduce to you those that are seated on the stage. And we're gonna start on the first row. Now, some of the seats are empty, but by the end of the program, they will be filled, so we're just gonna go with it. On the first row to my right, the Honorable Mary Ellen Barbera, the Chief Judge of the Court of Appeals of Maryland, my boss. <laughs> Next to her will be seated our County Executive, Mr. Rasheran Baker, but he did advise me that he would be running a little late, so we understand that. So Mr. Baker will be seated next to him. And then next to him will be the council chair, Mr. Derek Davis, and I know he'll be seated very shortly. And then on the end of the row is Angela Alsobrooks, the state's attorney for Prince George's County. <laughs> Starting on the left side of the front row is First Lady Reverend Peggy Macklin. Thank you. Next to her is the Honorable Kathy Surrett, the Coordinating Judge of the Family Division for the Circuit Court. <laughs> Sheriff Melvin High at the end of that row. Oh, sorry, sorry, strike that. Not yet, not at the end of the row, but Sheriff Melvin High. And then next to him, the Honorable Sidney Harrison, the Clerk of the Court for Prince George's Circuit Court. And at the end of the row, Sandra Battle, the court administrator for the Circuit Court for Prince George's County. <laughs> On the second row to my right is Tiffany Anderson, and she is the administrative judge of the District Court in Prince George's County. 
And next to her is Mr. Mark McGaw, who is the Deputy CAO for Prince George's County. For and next to Mr. McGaw is Nicholas Majette, who is the, the Chief Administrative Officer for Prince George's County. And next to Mr. Majette, and you'll hear a little bit more about her at the end of the program, is Ms. Denise McCain. And next to Mr. Mc Ms. McCain is Mr. Lionel Moore, who is the Director of the Family Division for Prince George's County. And on the second row on this side, is she there yet? Yep. We have council we have council member Karen Tolles. Council council member Mel Franklin. Council member Danielle Galeros, who is vice chair of the county council. Council member Demi Tavares. Council member Todd Turner. And then on the, on the third row to my right, we have Mr. Mark Anthony, who will be our vocalist. Next to, to him, we have Andrea Harrison from the County Council, Council Member Andrea Harrison, Council Member Mary Lehman. Mr. Patterson is not here. And then on our last row, we have the Chief Judge of the District Court of Maryland, Mr. John Morrissey. Thank you. We're also very fortunate today to have many members of the, the, the circuit, my colleagues from the circuit court. If you could please stand, the judges of the circuit court for Prince George's County. I do thank you for being here today. And we have with us also many of the judges from the district court. If you're in the district court, if you would please stand. Thank you. And that's Judge Lisa Hall Johnson, who is also the chair of the Domestic Violence Coordinating Council. And we thank you for your service there. We're also very fortunate to have many of our magistrates with us today. Our family magistrates, if you would please stand. Thank you. Thank you. We're also very fortunate to have many elected officials with us today. We have one second. Let me just go. We have delegate Eric Barron. Delegate Davis, Dele Delegate Elizabeth Proctor, Senator Joanne Benson, and Senator Paul Penske. So at this time, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming today, and we're going to proceed with our program. I am now going to call up Reverend Macklin to give the invocation. And Reverend Macklin is the first lady of the sanctuary at Kingdom Square. Reverend Macklin. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing together the public, the private county agencies, and the faith-based community of Prince George's County in the construction of our Family Justice Center as an avenue to end domestic violence in our county. We pray that the resources of this building will be used wisely to provide services to victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, human trafficking, and elderly abuse. We pray, Lord, that victims will feel safe through the services offered at the Family Justice Center, that the families, the husband, the mother, the child, and the children will utilize this facility. And we pray, God, for openness, that if someone sees something, that they will say something, and that we as a community would do something about it. 
Let us not take for granted, Lord, this charge, but embrace the opportunity to meet the needs and mission of our community. It is to whom we all believe and we all have our faith in. Amen. If you could please rise for the presentation of colors, followed by our national anthem. Thank you. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say the that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the You may be seated. I just want to thank Mark Anthony for that phenomenal rendition of our national anthem. <laughs> Let's give him another round of applause. Well, at this time, it is indeed my honor to bring up to the podium Mary Ellen Barbera, Chief Judge of the Court of Appeals of Maryland. Judge Barbera has been the Chief Judge of the Court of, Appe of Appeals since July 8th. 2013. She is the head of the judicial system in Maryland, the third branch of government, and she is my boss. <laughs> so it is indeed my honor today, and I am just so proud that she is here to share this day with the citizens of Prince George's County, and I welcome her to the podium to give her remarks. when I greeted, good afternoon everyone, what a glorious day, uh, literally a glorious day, and also glorious for what is happening, what is being recognized this afternoon. Uh, I, was, I was speaking very briefly with really my boss here in Prince George's County, uh, Judge Adams, and I said, you must be so happy, and she said, and what a beautiful word, she said, Mary Ellen, I am elated, and aren't we all? Aren't we all? We are elated 
to borrow the word, if I may, uh, because this is a fine, if not the finest example of boots on the ground delivery of justice in a quite fundamental way. It is receiving those who are under stress, individuals, sometimes families, under stress, terrible stress. And this is a welcoming environment. I understand there will be a tour, maybe. Oh, good. I haven't, I've seen a little bit, took a peek inside, but I um, look forward to it, as I'm sure all of you do. So again, good afternoon. It is my absolute pleasure to celebrate with you the opening of the Prince George's County Family Justice Center. We are here today because of the collaboration, planning, partnership, and dedication of many organizations. And on behalf of the judiciary, if I may, I thank all of you for your hard work and sharing the vision for this vital community resource. Thank you for those of you behind me, forgive my back, on the stage, and I know there are many others in, uh, he gathered here this afternoon who played a role, uh, indeed a, a fundamental role, an important role in, in making this happen. Last year, ladies and gentlemen, 42 Marylanders died as the result of domestic violence. In 2015, there were 31,400, 31,400 protective order cases filed in our district and circuit courts across the state. More than 6,500 protective order petitions were filed last year here in Prince George's County. Regrettably, but we will fix this, the highest number in the state. That is again why the leadership of this county in put, pulling together this Family Justice Center is so important, so important. These are sobering numbers that speak to the level of need for domestic violence victims and their families. We can best address this need through the Family Justice Center, which brings together in one welcoming and convenient, also important, not just welcoming but convenient location, all of the resources that victims and their families may require. Here in Upper Marlboro, the Family Justice Center is located on Main Street, the heart of your community, front and center where people need it to be, steps, mere steps from the courthouse. As a judiciary, we strive to build partnerships to be responsive and adaptable to community needs and to ensure the highest level of service. By working together and creating those partnerships, we can serve the public while providing effective and accessible, accessible justice for all. I thank Prince George's County Executive Rashern Baker for his leadership and vision in making the Family Justice Center a priority project for the county. I Council, council Chairman Derek Davis along with the members of the council who are here this afternoon for their contribution to this effort to the, bring much needed services to the community. I commend my judicial colleague, Prince George's County and Seventh Circuit Administrative Judge, Sheila Tillerson Adams, who championed this effort by engaging, by, and she does this so well, by engaging stakeholders for the benefit of Prince George's County residents, and I must say, beyond Prince George's County. Judge Adams is a leader statewide. I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that. And this is a role model for what other circuit and our district court, I know that our district court is very involved in exactly these kinds of efforts. Uh, and going forward, we're going to model the behavior. You're modeling the behavior for us. We're going to adapt that behavior and spread it. So thank you. I know, Chief Judge Morrissey, that you agree with me. Absolutely. Both the district court and the circuit court will work closely with the Family Justice Center. I know I spoke with Judge Tiffany Anderson, the administrative judge here. Where are you, Tiffany? There you are. You were right behind me. And I know she has pledged 
her cooperation and support of this effort and of the, of the center to make certain that victims and their families are able to obtain the services they need. From today forward, ladies and gentlemen, families will now have improved and safe, safe access to legal assistance, counseling, social services, and so much more, all in one convenient place to aid them on their road to recovery from various forms of abuse. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for being here. Uh, I love seeing so many happy faces because, as I said, it is a glorious day. It's a joyful day. And I look forward. I look forward to watching the work ahead, to participating, if I may, as much as, um, as I can, and certainly to support the effort of this Justice Center and with you to recognize this important, indeed, historic occasion. So again, we will, we will look forward, we will anticipate, we will know that a difference is being made in this center, a difference that will make lot, a fundamental change in the lives of victims and their families. All the better for them and for our community. Thank you again, everyone. At this time, I'm going to call up the chair of our county council, Mr. Derek Davis. Now, we're, we're very fortunate because in Prince George's County, we have cooperation and collaboration between our three branches of government. That is something for other jurisdictions to marvel at. You may disagree, but we can sit down and talk to one another and do what's best for the citizens of Prince George's County. And it gives me great, great honor today to introduce and bring up to the microphone the chair of our county council, Mr. Derek Davis. It's easy to cooperate and collaborate when the judge calls. <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny, you learn something new every day. I never knew the judge has a boss. Ms. Barbieri. But I knew she was in tune with the supreme master of the universe, our, our God. And I think she prayed for this beautiful day because she definitely delivered it. Um, and, and just to have the opportunity to work in this space, in this time, in this place called Prince George's County with such great folks in government, in the court system, uh, in the executive branch, our state's attorney, our public safety officials, our domestic violence team, as I call it, that runs from the Department of Family Services through to the Health Department, through the Department of Social Services, and into our community of faith-based leaders and nonprofit organizations that come together to say, hey, look, in Prince George's County, we're going to have a safety net. We're going to have a safety net. And you know what a net is, right? That's a whole bunch of twi um, threads twined together to help those who fall. Is that what we're about here in Prince George's County? <laughs> Trying to get my ad libs out of the way because you know, you know what happens when you give someone who's elected to office a microphone. They tend to um, stick to the script. <clears throat> Rarely does that happen. But I've adopted a strategy that helps me stick to the script. And, and that is one, you, you allow staff to understand what you're trying to accomplish they prepare remarks, but I have even better one. Since I'm the chairman of a nine member county council, what I often do is when I'm getting ready to read our thoughtful remarks that were prepared with a lot of thought and preparation, I ask them to stand. Now they hate it. They absolutely hate it. They say, we said you were the chairperson, so you deliver our remarks. But I think out of respect and also for what um, Chief Judge has said to us, and, and, and you don't, I don't know if Chief Judge is the right nomenclature for you, but that's how I look at it, because I know where I get my direction from. I'm going to ask my colleagues on the council to stand as I talk about domestic violence. And, and so domestic violence and other forms of abuse are claiming lives, tearing families apart, and leaving our community in shock and grief with each 
horrible tragedy. I don't know how many of you participated with us as a county council last year where we had a um, town hall meeting, but I know that each one of us left there with a very new charge under the ch um, chairmanship of Mel Franklin, and that is to ensure that we worked in a very collaborative way to, um, to deter this scourge. Today's grand opening of the Family Justice Center, we are, as a community, addressing the unfortunate reality by providing critical resources to protect and assist domestic violence survivors as they move forward with their lives. The placement of this center is the first, and this is an applause line, this is the first of its kind and is right here in Prince George's County. Survivors can now take comfort in knowing that when courthouse proceedings are over, they can conveniently make a short walk to 19 service providers located at this one-stop shop. <laughs> On behalf of my council colleagues, it is my pleasure to stand with County Executive Rashern Baker, State's Attorney Angela Alsobrooks, Judge Sheila Tillerson Adams, and each of you here today to open the doors to the Family Justice Center, the first of its kind. We commend your leadership, and once again, everyone that's here, that's listening, and if you don't know her, give her a round of applause because you know she doesn't take many bows. Give a round of applause to our Honorable Judge Sheila Tiller Addison, Tillerson Adams. <laughs> Keep that round of applause going for all of the folks who are here today because today we're sending a message to our friends, family members and neighbors, that dealing with domestic violence in Prince George's County in the state of Maryland, you are not alone. We collectively will defeat this scourge. God bless you. Just as an aside, you know, no one does anything by themselves. And we'll get to the team that made this happen a little later. But thank you so much for your remarks, Council Chair Davis. At this time, I'm going to call up the Honorable Angela D. Alsobrooks, the state's attorney for Prince George's County, who has just been a phenomenal supporter of this facility. Now, we've all read the papers and heard of all the domestic homicides in this county recently. And you, as we know, as the prosecutor, it is her job to prosecute them. But what I also know about this prosecutor, she also wants to find proactive ways to stop it. And that's why she has been so supportive of this facility. So this time I bring to the podium Angela Also Brooks. Good afternoon, everybody. This literally is such a beautiful day. Uh, and I am so, so grateful to have a chance to be here with each of you today. Um, and when I say grateful, I think about this is a day we waited for, for a very, very long time. I was sitting there thinking of a woman named Pat Herbert, um, a friend to many of us. Uh, I started in the state's attorney's office in 1997. And I have to say, under the tutelage of Patricia Herbert, she was a person who worked as a domestic violence advocate. And all of those years ago, um, Pat was a person who took each victim as if they were in her own family, uh, who cared for them, who fought hard, and really encouraged me uh, to be on the front lines of this fight. And all these years later, sometimes I just can't believe uh, that we're still seeing much of what we saw way back in 1997. Um, but the fight has just been uh, one that we've all engaged in together. Um, I'm looking in the back here at Ada Clark Edwards and all of the members of the state's attorney's office who I have to acknowledge today. Would you all raise your hands, all the members of the state's attorney's office, to say thank you uh, so much for what they do. Um, I'm thinking of Ada Clark Edwards, who is the chief of our special victims unit, um, the family violence unit in our office. And what I have to tell you, even as I think of Ada, and I know she will kill me for saying this, um, this fight has been personal for so many of us. Ada, for example, who had a very devastating loss in her own family, I have marveled um, over the last year or so as it did not affect her uh, in terms of her passion. She fought for all of these families in this county, even um, as she suffered a loss in her own family. This fight has been personal to us as we watched Layla Miller 
23-year-old Layla Miller who rode in the car with her daddy, who she had every reason to trust. Um, and that by the end of that car ride, she had been shot in the head and had her throat slit. This is a personal fight for many of us as we think about Kanija Bibbs and we think about Jalen Wright and we think about not only the adults who have suffered in this county, but the children. We have had all total at least 12 of them um, over the last two years who have suffered and died as a result of this epidemic in our community. But today, we are not here to outline the problem because we are well aware of the problem, but thank God for a solution. Uh, this Family Justice Center, thank God today for our answer. This is our community's answer. We have responded, responded, responded. Today is an answer uh, to this particular phenomena. And so what I say is not to stand here and outline any further what the issue is. But to say, let's together not grow weary in our good doing, in our work together. The battle is not over. The battle certainly is not over. This is one step, uh, but there are so many steps that must follow here. Let's continue to work together. Uh, let's never forget the Layla Millers and never forget the Kanija. Let's really reaffirm our commitment today to putting an end for good. Let's not carry this into the next generation. We can't afford to. We really cannot afford to. This is tearing apart our families. But today, again, is a solution. So I stand here and just join uh, really also with um, Pastor Macklin in saying, may God bless this center. May God bless every person who enters it. May God bless every mother, father, and child, and grandparent who enters this center. May God bless every person who works here. Uh, who comes to work every day to help another family through. Uh, may God bless all of the law enforcement officers and everyone who will see to it that this center is the most successful we have ever seen. And may God continue to bless Prince George's County. So thank you all again for everything that you've done. Everybody who's made this possible today, uh, Judge Adams, a fierce advocate. We are so fortunate to have her and Chief Judge. But thank all of you all so much. And may God again continue to bless Prince George's County. Thank you. Our next speaker will be our county executive, the Honorable Rashard L. Baker. No, your Tommy was impeccable, so it's okay. I already told them that you said you'd be here at 2.30, and you did exactly. I hadn't called you up yet. You haven't called me up? <laughs> You're going to read it. Go ahead. That's all right. That's all right. Go ahead. Take the mic. <laughs> <laughs> As if I could actually uh, not show up after Judge Adams uh, commanded me to be here. Um, yeah, I'm going to be very, very brief. Um, I, I just want to echo a few things that our state's attorney has said. But first, I want to uh, give a round of applause to Judge Adams. Can we give her a round of applause? I mean, really. Seriously. Whether it is Barry Stanton or Tom Hemmler or Betty Francis, or Mark McGall, or Chief Stawinski, or anybody on the fifth floor, Judge Adams has hit him over the head with the Family Justice Center. She's probably got about 90 drawings of what it should look like. And if you didn't know anything else, you knew this was a passion of hers. You know, Derek, the, the chair was just saying, this is seven years in the making. Um, you know, it felt like, you know, 30 years in the making, the way she was pounding on us. And so, you know, sometimes Judge Adams would call us, uh, Angela, and we would be um, trying to figure out who he can give the phone to. <laughs> you know, I, I said, you know, I'm, I'm sneaking out the back door. But you think about things that move us. You think about our jobs. It's not our job to create a family justice center. It's not the state's attorney's job to create a family justice center. It's not the council's job to create a family justice center. It's not the state, it's not the county executive's job. It's our job. It is our job. It is our family members, it is our children, it is our mothers, it is our grand grandmothers, it is our brothers and our sisters. It is our job as a county to create a family justice center. So when
It is not just to irritate us. It's to spur us into action. When we build this center, and we will, it is not for us. It is for the men and women and children who come through here. It's a signal to the rest of Prince George's County that enough is enough. That we're going to take control of our lives. Too many of our young people, too many of our family members have died around violence and domestic violence. It is time for coming together. As the state's attorney said, you know, this is not the end. This is the beginning. Bricks and mortars will not solve our problems. Humans will. So the Family Justice Center is about us. It is about our commitment as a county and as a people to do what God has called us to do. And that is to make this world better. God bless you and God bless you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. County Executive. And I just want everyone to know that he may have joked about not taking my call, and sometimes he didn't, but, but Barry took it. <laughs> and now Mark McGall takes it. <laughs> and they always deliver, and I can't thank you enough. But there's been a lot of talk and applaud about me today, and I feel very uncomfortable about, about that. But the spark for the Family Justice Center did not come from me. It came from the next person that I'm going to bring to the microphone, the Honorable Kathy Surrett. Now, Judge Surrett came to a bench meeting one day and said, we need a Family Justice Center in Prince George's County. I didn't even know what a Family Justice Center was at that time. But she made sure I knew what it was by the time she left that. I was just charged with finding a place for it. And Hence, we were on that mission. But the energy behind this Family Justice Center, the motivation behind this Family Justice Center came from Judge Catherine Surrett, the coordinating judge of the Family Division for Prince George's County, Maryland. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. It is indeed a beautiful, wonderful day. Thank you all for being here. There is no way I could thank every one of you who have played such a major role in creating the Family Justice Center in the short amount of time I have to speak. So instead, I hope to thank each one of you individually after the ceremony. But I would ask that all of the members of the Family Justice Task Force stand up and raise your hands. Come on, members. None of this could have happened without the true genius and leadership of Judge Tillerson Adams and the strong support of County Executive Rashern Baker. Special thanks goes as well to our Family Division Director, Lionel Moore, who has helped drive this initiative from the time it was just a dream to today. In October of 2011, the Family Justice Center Task Force met for a two-day retreat and set a goal we truly aim collectively to achieve the end of violence in Prince George's County. As we have repeatedly said, the Family Justice Center will serve as a multidisciplinary one-stop shop to provide coordinated services to victims of domestic violence, human trafficking, sexual assault, and elder abuse in a beautiful, inviting, respectful setting. As well, it is our intent that the center will serve as a focal point where stakeholders from throughout the community will come together to build a countywide culture 
that champions the inviolability and dignity of all. We all have an important role in ensuring that the center meets its promise. And so today, I thank all of you not only for the extraordinary work you've done so far, but as well for your ongoing partnership and commitment. Thank you. Judge Surratt said that this center wouldn't be here without our partners. And another partner in this journey is the Honorable Melvin High, Sheriff of Prince George's County, and the men and women of the Office of the Sheriff that have played a vital role in planning this facility and the courts in this county each and every day. So at this time, I bring up the Honorable Melvin High, Sheriff of Prince George's County. Thank you, Judge. Certainly to all of the platform uh, guests who are here, to all of you, our distinguished residents and visitors to Prince George's County, good afternoon. As has been indicated, it is a beautiful day. God has blessed us today to have this opening on such a delightful day. I'm delighted to be here for the grand opening of this new important facility for our county in the fight against domestic violence. I've had the opportunity with my champions, with Judge Surratt, with Judge Hall Johnson, members of our police department and our sheriff's office and many of you to be out in the community and hear the voices of our victims, our survivors, but also those who were involved in battering and to hear what they've had to say about their needs and how we can find better solutions to address those needs. For each of the agencies here, this is another important county collaboration that demands the focus, attention, and resources that each of us can bring to bear for very important reasons, to change lives, and to keep our community engaged and focused on how a community united can eradicate domestic violence. As I say when I'm out in the community and here with my partners as I talk about this issue, Certainly my goal, I believe all of our goal, is to get to zero incidents. Thank you. So many times, far too many of our citizens face problems that they feel are theirs to face alone. But the real value of a community is when we can be the hope for those in need and share our collective resources to develop shared solutions. That is so much a part of the real value of the Family Justice Center that it has influenced us to become advocates for individuals and families whose lives are impacted by domestic violence. There's no duplication of service or redundancy here, but rather a joining of forces and resources so that our impact can be greater and more efficient. I want to, again, thank my champions, Judge Adams and Judge Rett, and really the people's champions, for their vision and for bringing it to reality. I also want to thank Lieutenant Colonel Rocky Perori of my agency, who was on the team with Judge Adams and Judge Rett and all of our partners here at the very beginning when the Family Justice Center was just an idea and who really acted as the project manager for the office of the sheriff and his participation and all of the members of the sheriff's office. And I'd like for each of you to raise your hands, members of the sheriff's office, for your participation in getting us here today. The very best days in law enforcement and in service to the community are the days when we feel like I got it right today. This is a great day in service to this community. And I believe we can all say we got it right today. Thank you.
Thank you. We certainly did get it right today. Chief Barbera, thank you. Thank you for being here. You know, it means a lot when the chief judge of the state comes to our county, comes to our jurisdiction, and takes time out of your busy day to show the citizens of Prince George's County how much we mean to the state of Maryland. Thank you for being here. I want us all to please stand up and give a round of applause to Judge Surrett. Because without that spark, without that idea, we would not be talking about the Family Justice Center here today. And I do thank you. I thank you for your passion. I thank you for your vision. And I thank you for your tenacity on this issue. I also want us to thank Lionel Moore. Lionel Moore is the director of our family division. But the clock is ticking on that, unfortunately. <laughs> but I want to thank him for his planning, his organization, his management. He has done a phenomenal job. We asked him to do be two directors at one time. He has done a phenomenal job for this county, for our court, and putting together this Family Justice Center. So, Lionel, we thank you. And the administration of this administrator that this court has, Ms. Battle, Ms. Sandra Battle, and my deputy court administrator, Ms. Santiago, Hey, Ms. Ms. Payne Santiago, Erica Santiago Payne. And then the coordination of the operations of this facility. We asked one of our IT employees to step in and map out the coordination of that. And Ms. Joretta Myers did a phenomenal job in that interim in coordinating the operations. So Joretta, wherever you are, thank you. I'm going to take a few minutes because these people worked hard on this. So I think it's important that you know that. Lisette Dupree, everything graphic or program wise and printed, I want to thank Lisette for all that she did to design these. But more importantly, for her patience because everybody changed everything at the last minute. So <laughs> I thank you for that. Just Red already asked the members of the task force to raise their hand, but I want to acknowledge them again because this was a six year journey. And they didn't say, I'm tired. I'm not going to do this. They stuck with it. They encouraged her. They came with their support. And they were in it to change the lives of citizens in Prince George's County. So I thank the members of the task force for your work on this project. Now, all of their names are printed in the program, okay? I also want to thank the grand opening committee. Isn't this lovely today? And I also want to thank them for their wisdom of canceling it last month when it was raining so we could have this wonderful day today. <laughs> their names are also printed in your program. I want to thank our county, our county executive, our county council for your unanimous commitment to this project. This is the true essence of collaboration. Each branch brings something very different to the table, but all of us, all of us care just county and making sure their lives are lives that they can live with joy in this county. So I want to thank our county. And every time I went to the county council, they didn't ask me, why judge? They asked me, what can I do? What can we do? They may have asked, where is it going to be? There may have been some debate about where is it going to be. But they asked, what can we do? When is it going to open? We're behind you 100%. 
the county executive. He may have joked about not taking my call, but he didn't hesitate putting the money in the budget to build this building. So I want to thank him. And not just for doing that, but committing the resources of the county to assist us with this project. And I want to particularly point out the Office of Central Services. The Office of Central Services did a phenomenal job in helping us with this project. From Floyd Hope, working with the owner of this building, Mr. Bill Chesley, and thank you for all you did. And Mr. Jack Sloan didn't complain about all the revisions to the plans and the locations and the plans and the plans. I understand and I appreciate your patience. And Megan Bryan, putting all those personal details on every little thing to make sure it was right. And this was different for, you may think of for county staff, they embraced this project because they appreciated what it meant, what it means to the citizens of Prince George's County. When you go into the facility, you will see and feel exactly what I'm talking about. So I thank you. To all the center partners, and when you go in, you will see the center partners. All their names are listed on the program. Each who plays a very vital role in this whole network we call domestic violence, bringing it together. Each of them are so important in making sure that we make a difference in the lives of these citizens, but more importantly, change the way we think about domestic violence and violence in this community. Change it so that we can eradicate it from this. And we look at this yet 10 years from now, we're not talking about all these murders in our, in our county because of violence. We're talking about lifting up our children and lifting up this community. So I'm very thankful for our partners. And to the court IT staff and the sheriff's department for working together to make sure that this center is secure. You'll see when you go in. It's secure and technologically sound so that our citizens can be in there in a safe environment. The volunteers that just rallied and came out to assist, thank you. So many of you, thank you. The Administrative Office of the Court, Office of Communication, for getting the word out. And I also would just want to introduce to you today the new director of our Family Justice Center. She hasn't started yet. The center will officially open for business on June the 27th. But Denise McCain comes to us with years of service in, in, in victim service from a state's attorney's office, from the governor's office on victim service, the Office of Legal, Legal Aid, from the Family Crisis Center. Denise McCain brings a wealth of knowledge in this area, and we are just honored to have her as the director of the Family Justice Center. So I'm going to ask if you would please stand. Thank you. Okay. Just welcome. Okay. Well, thank you, Judge Adams, and everyone for being here. This is, as, as, as everyone has said, truly a beautiful day. It's a landmark occasion, and I'm just overjoyed and thrilled to be a part of this new venture, a new initiative. Um, the work that has gone forth already, as everyone has spoken of, is just tremendous. And we have been very fortunate to have collaboration and coordination from many agencies. And the true success of the center will largely be contingent upon ongoing support. So I just thank you in advance for being here and for the work that you're going to do with us. We do appreciate it. And again, thank you for the opportunity to be here as well. Thank you. stand here and name all the names, but I do want to thank them. I want to thank our Chief of Police, Hank Selinski. I thought I saw him here. Our Where is he? Okay. Thank you for being here. Barry Stanton, who now gave up the calls for me to Mark, but 
Thank you for being here, Barry. <laughs> our fire chief, I saw you, Mark Bashir. Thank you, all of our first responders. Thank you so much for being here. And our business community, I do see Mr. Jim Estep in the audience. Thank you, Jim. Our, you know, this is, this is a public-private partnership, you know? It's not just going to take the government to do this. It's going to take everybody across all corners of our county. So with that being said, and also there's one other, per there's so many people I want to point out, but I do want to point out the director of the Department of Family Services, Ms. Jackie Roan. Where is Jackie Roan? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the associate director, okay. <laughs> and thank you. Okay, I'm going to now ask the members of the stage to please come up. We're going to do the ribbon cutting. It's safe here. Oh, it is safe. Okay. You, Joe, you go up front, Joe. I go back there. My constituent in District 7. No, we are filming on the other side of you. Excuse me, we're not players. Could you please be seated for a second? Do the um, benediction. Do we do the benediction? No. Okay. Shall we all stand for the benediction? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we raise our voices to you, Lord, with excitement, God. We raise our voices to you, Lord, with a spark in within ourselves. God, we raise our voices into you, God, to move us, God, to help the citizens of Prince George's County, Lord. God, be with every public servant, Lord. Be with our community of faith leaders, God. Be with our private agencies, Lord. Be with those, God, who have put work and effort in making this family justice center where you will be glorified. God, we thank you, Lord. And we lift up our voices at, together and we all say thank you, God, for the Family Justice Center. Amen. Hello, everyone, again, if I can just have your attention briefly for a moment. If I could please have everyone's attention so we can organize the tour. Again, I just want to thank you all for being here and sharing in this landmark historic event. Everyone at check-in, I believe you received a program uh, that included a listing of the varying facilities that are inside and an overview of the center. If you would please allow the podium to guests to go in first and you will then have the opportunity to take a self-guided tour uh, through the facility as well. So again, we have many volunteers that are out here. I think they're identified with name tags on. We're going to serve you very tasteful refreshments. So again, we just thank you and ask you to enjoy yourselves. Again, we appreciate you being here. They need you in. 
There you go. Oh, wait, one for the constituent, Mr. Surrett. <laughs> Did you get us? I got yes, it. Yes, the got husband it. of Judge Surrett. That's right. Oh. And constituents of Mr. Surrett. Yep. Yep.